Welcome to Happy Today podcast. This is a podcast for those who want to improve service experience of internal services. If you use ServiceNow or other enterprise service management system, then this is for you. So, welcome to episode three of Happy Today podcast. Today we're going to talk about measuring and when should you measure, what are the fears related to it. And I think uh, a good approach for, for measuring is that it's actually only showing you what the employees are already experiencing. So there's always the, the employee experience already there. If you're measuring or not, that doesn't really change the fact. But uh, why do you think something like, why, why are people hesitant sometimes saying that that is not the time, the, the customer is not ready yet, or, or what is related to the topic? I would say that the the transparency of measuring things and showing that directly to the business unit sometimes enterprises are thinking that we have to be more ready to be able to show but it's it's, it's not about the whole measurement is not about showing that one number that is your your result or that is your goal or that is whatever the main point of measurement is to understand what you should be doing better and understanding that together with all the stakeholders will really help you to get rid of those kind of a pushing things to different directions and showing the business units that in overall we, we know from our benchmarks that in overall everybody is doing quite well but everybody is also having problem areas so recognizing that together with the business units builds trust not pointing out the IT is doing badly yeah, and, and I think uh, and I, yeah and I also see that 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 People feel it that like a one-time thing with projects, yeah. but all the time what you're doing in enterprises, you're doing multiple small things. You're having digital transformation projects. You are changing uh, something to the cloud. You're having new devices, and all these small things actually sum up to the employee experience. So I think that's usually the reason what I, what I talk with the customers is that, that this is why you need to be measuring it continuously, so that you you see the trends, all the small things, because also some unexpected things might happen that are totally out of your control. Like uh, I saw with one customer that they had a security breach, they were getting accounts locked in and it was clearly visible in the productivity numbers of the employees. So now they can suddenly show that, hey, we, this is the effect if we have poor security, for example. Yeah, I think the one, one good example for that is Virgin Trains, snowstorms in UK, the scores dropped True. for two days. And, and, but that's how we are. So when we are measuring feelings, then of course other things really matter as well. So you have to be having long-term trends that you will, will really understand that you're going to the right direction. Yeah, and, uh, and the customer we are going to be talking with sits uh, this year is, is they, they actually found it a pattern. So because they have continuous measurement, they actually found that uh, after each month change, uh, people are using the ERP a lot. And that's actually when they get a lot of bad, bad feedback. Yeah. So now they maybe can, can start thinking about, so how could we actually react proactively on those? Because they have learned it from the measurement data. Yeah. And also, if, if, you, if you have to do one-time survey and you want to have good results, call us. We can tell you what month, <laughs> what weekday you have to do that because we, we know that from our benchmark that in very, very high level uh, months and times of a year have an influence on the scoring as well. But that's maybe not the issue today. Yeah. One thing I, I want to mention, uh, you probably remember in the very early stages, we had one customer who said that one of the biggest benefits they ever got from measuring end user experience was with two service owners who were complaining about the first line service desk quality yeah. in the beginning and very badly saying that it's first line service desk's problem and their fault. But when they saw the results like per service and they were able to see that the other services are doing really well from end user perspective, but their services were the problem. Then they had to recognize and had to tell the services, let's together try to fix this. And this is kind of a, you will always have new services. You will have always new applications, but understanding how you in overall with the service owners, other people from IT, your team, providers, partners are able to resolve tickets just for that application. Yeah, yeah. You can, you, there will be always new applications and, and new, new development in the product uh, sure. going on. And I, I think it also comes to the transparency. And, and when you're measuring, you have hard facts. Now you have numbers. You kind of get rid of the gut feeling because yeah. the gut feeling discussions are really difficult. Uh, we had this one customer who was changing the outsourced service provider 
And they already had like two years of data saying that this is the experience level that our employees are used to. And when the numbers changed after, after the uh, provider changed, they were able to discuss together with the provider that, hey, this is where we used to be. Now we need to do some actions to get back to the, to the previous level. Uh, and, and the customer said to me later that that positive was priceless to actually have the data. Yeah. And I think in that case, it was really it was great to see that how customer reacted in that case. They were not saying that the new provider was really bad, yes, yes. but they were able to get a result because they had they knew that they made some big, big changes from an end user perspective, yeah. but they had a now common focus on getting things better. I think it took about six months to then to get to about the same level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's also really good from provider perspective when you're looking at the, the experience data and you see that it's because of this service and maybe it was the customer who actually were responsible of deciding that we're going to take this service into use. And maybe they haven't uh, trained their employees and that kind of thing. So yeah. really measuring and, and showing the numbers is, is nothing to fear of. It's just that you actually start to be able to communicate about the experience. Yeah, yeah. So I think one, one thing here is, yeah. is also the kind of the, um, we quite often hear that we are not ready, as, as you said in the yeah. beginning. And, and one thing we hear is that we want to make this portal ready or we want to change, we want to close the email before. But that is one of the things that it's, it's definitely not the thing to do, kind of push this measurement after something has been changed. Yeah. I think there was one excellent example. You remember the case where there was a customer and an MSP provider and yeah. we started to measure with them. And the first meeting we had with them, we were able to see from the feedback that the email channel was losing one hour more for each incident compared to the portal channel. And the, the customer's lady said to the provider immediately when she saw the results that now I trust you. Yeah. I didn't understand what was happening. And I asked that after the meeting and they said that we have been talking about this issue for two years now, that we should close email totally and move our end users to use the portal. What happened after that is that the customer was able to communicate to the end users their customers that please, we are now closing the email because yeah. the portal channel is more efficient for you. So they didn't have to communicate. It's more efficient for IT. Of course, it is more efficient for IT as well, yeah. but it is much more, a better message for the end users. Yeah. But that's kind of the only one example of, of how this measurement is linked to, to different things, what you do in, in IT. Yeah. So I guess we, we both probably come up to the same conclusion that there's only one thing to do for the people listening. <laughs> and I guess that is start today. Don't yeah. wait. Yeah. Start to make your interests happier today to, by understanding where they are and then take the actions one by one. So that's all right. So thank you for listening. Uh, that was episode three. Uh, you want to learn more, you can go to happysignals.com and uh, yeah, talk to you later. Yep. Bye. Thanks.